Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Trending Reviews. So today I'm pretty excited. This is the brand new lens from Tamron. It's the 28 to 200 millimeter f2.8 and it's the world's first all-in-one zoom lens at that maximum aperture of 2.8. So today I'm going to be showcasing a lot of sample photos and videos for you but the video you're seeing right now is recorded directly from the 200 millimeter focal length on that Tamron lens and this this is the 28 millimeter focal length so let's get straight into it all right guys so just to start off a little bit about the specs on this lens i'm actually filming and recording this video right now that you can see from this tamron lens itself so i'll be showing you some b-roll footage of it that i shot a little bit earlier to cover some of the main points on the actual lens itself so starting off this is the world's first all-in-one zoom lens for sony e-mount cameras so it ranges from a wide angle to a very high focal length at a awesome maximum aperture of 2.8 and it's very lightweight. Tamron have always been very good at building quality lenses that are not so heavy to take with you, especially if you're always on the move. This weighs only 575 grams and it's just so easy to take with you. And as you're probably aware, it's an RXD lens, which stands for Rapid Extra Silent Stepping Drive, which is a motor that provides super fast and super silent autofocus, especially when you're doing video recording, then you're not gonna hear any autofocus noise when you're filming and doing your shots. So that's a really good bonus, especially when you're creating YouTube videos like this. In addition to that, the lens is weather sealed, so it does compensate for a bit of moisture and a bit of drizzle. So if you do get any water or a bit of oil on the lens, it will wash away and you can do day-to-day -day weather usage outside. I wouldn't ideally take it out if it's very heavy rain because who would take their SLR camera or mirrorless cameras out in that type of weather, but it's, it does a really good job in that front anyway. Now the build quality is pretty solid. It's not as solid as like my previous Sigma 20 four to 70 millimeter lens that I have, which is very heavy and it's just metallic, it's aluminum. And sometimes, you know, as I was mentioning, it can be a bit of a pain taking with you when you're always on the move. In addition to that, it does accept the standard 67 millimeter filters as well. So if you do have those for any of your previous lenses for your Sony cameras, then they should also fit perfectly fine. So it's always great that the Tamron have always kept the standard of the filter sizes to compensate for all of the previous filters that you may have used. And last but not least, this lens doesn't have any optical image stabilization in built into it. This is where Tamron make a lot of their cost savings. They rely on the mirrorless camera ability to do the in-body image stabilization. So if you are taking this out and you're doing handheld shots, especially if you're maxing out the focal lens probably at 200 millimeters, then you're gonna get some shaky footage and you're gonna have to rely on the full power of your camera. So that's something just to be aware of. And I will be showcasing some handheld camera shots taken at 200 millimeters just to see how shaky or how well the in-body image stabilization has reacted to it. So keep an eye out for that one as well. But finally, the price point, it's just under 800 pounds. I think that's an absolute bargain for this type of lens, especially when it's an all-in-one zoom lens, which you're not gonna get another camera lens at that price point for a very long time. And of course, they've made some cost savings with the type of material they've used to build the body of the lens. And of course, not having any image stabilization in there as well. If you can ignore some of those stuff and rely on things like the in-body image stabilization, then I think this is an absolute bargain. It's definitely worth the price point. And I'm gonna showcase some pictures and videos to you guys as well as some samples to see how actually good quality this is. Now, although the maximum aperture is 2.8, that is at a specific focal length and that is done up until 35 millimeters. So have a look at the sidebar here. Here's all the different focal lengths you'd have to reach for the switch in the aperture changes and the highest 5.6 aperture that you're going to get is at the 150 millimeter mark now just remember this is a zoom lens so you probably want to know how close you can get to certain objects so if you are going to get close for maybe macro shooting just be aware at the 28 millimeter mark you can only get close to 0.19 meters or 19 centimeters and at the 200 millimeter mark it's 80 centimeters or 0.8 meters so just be aware of that range and the distance between the lens and your focal points so having said that let's go ahead and i'm going to go take this out and take some shots for you guys to show you some samples and the capabilities of this lens but make sure you subscribe i've got a full review of a whole host of images photos videos autofocus tests low light photography nighttime photography all that kind of stuff in an upcoming video so make sure you subscribe and you won't miss that one but let's go ahead and take some sample shots just to quickly show you in this video 
Okay guys, so here are just some sample pictures I've taken at the 28 millimeter focal length and a 200 millimeter focal length as well. Just to give you guys a idea of the difference in how much of a zoom you can get with this lens as well. So as you can see, it is a pretty good zoom and you do get that nice depth of field at the 200 millimeter mark as well. So there is a wide range and this is one of the reasons why this is the currently the best all-in-one zoom lens at f2.8. So I've just taken three sample pictures here at the 200 millimeter focal length. When you're taking pictures at the full zoom levels, you sometimes might get shaky footage. So with my Sony a7 III IBIS currently set on, it is doing a bit of the image stabilization already in the camera. And as you can see at that length, I've got some pretty smooth shots here with various different depths of field there as well. And I think it's just come out great. So there isn't any shaky pictures here. Everything looks crisp, it's detailed and it's very clear. Now here's some portrait shots just to showcase to you guys what the actual capabilities of this lens is if you wanna do portrait photography. And as you can see, I think it's just great. The color stand out, it's vibrant, it's very detailed, it's crisp. And I feel like this is a perfect camera that you can take out and test around with different focal lengths if you wanted to take any portrait photography with various different people. Now I will be covering a lot more low light pictures in an upcoming video as well, so make sure you subscribe so you won't miss that one. This first picture here is actually pretty dark. The sun has gone down fully, but it has tried to brighten up the picture a little bit. Now I have to take into consideration that my Sony a7 III is putting in a bit of the night mode as well when it does the scene detection. But as you can see here, it's not the most sharpest and clearest image, but at f2.8, I think this has done a really good job. I think if you look closely to my hat and around my face, it is a little bit blurry and not too sharp, but overall it's not too bad. Now in terms of getting macro shots in low light, I've just gone very close to the raindrops here on my car and it's actually done a very good job. It has blurred out a lot of the picture as well and you've got that horizontal strip which is in focus. So ideally I would have liked to get a little bit more in focus as well, but at f2.8, the camera has done a great job capturing some of these watermarks and the droplets. Now in this picture here, I've pointed it at the sky and I've got the lamppost there in the middle. You can definitely see a lot of the shadows in the car on the left and then the houses in the distance, so it is very dark and it hasn't pulled in a lot of the night mode as well, so you do see a lot of the dullness in the picture as well. So from my opinion, it's not super clear, but considering how dark it actually was, I think it's done an okay job. I wouldn't say an excellent job, but for me, I think it's possibly maybe seven out of 10. Now going into my bedroom, I turned all of the lights off and I just put some fairy lights on on the background there on the shelf. Now I took a picture of this uh, lamp and I've got my gimbal there just behind that. It's completely pitch black and I kept my camera on a tripod for this photo, otherwise it would have been very blurry. And surprisingly, with the faint lights coming out from the background there, it has done a very good job taking a nice solid picture with deep blacks in there with dark shadows. Now this is something I would definitely consider a picture to look like once I've taken it in this lighting condition, which is almost pitch black. And finally, a little bit about the autofocus. So the first clip here, I've used the 35 millimeter focal length. As you can see, panning to my face and panning away, it is quite smooth, it's quite quick, and I can see that it jumps very quickly in getting me back in focus. Now moving on to the 50 millimeter one, if I do the same thing, move slightly slower, it takes a little bit longer to get the focus back, but again, when it pans back onto me, it does give me a reasonable amount of speed. The quicker I go, I can predict that I wouldn't get the autofocus back, much like in the example here for the 70 millimeter. So I'm walking towards the camera here to show that I stay in focus and I continually stay in focus until I get quite close to it. Now, as I move away from the screen, it took about two seconds to focus in the background. And when I come back and move away, I move too quickly for it to focus. So in that focal length, it didn't come that fast. The autofocus didn't happen that fast. So as you can see, the longer the focal length, the longer it will take for the lens to try and get that focus back into play. Overall, I'm very happy with this lens. I will be using this as my daily driver going forward. And if you did like this review, 
I hope you give this a thumbs up and I hope you subscribe. The next video that I'll be releasing on this lens will be the full comparison of all the different photos, videos, autofocus tests and night mode shots as well using this lens. So that'll be a little bit lengthier. So keep an eye out for that. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have any other questions about this lens, then do drop a comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.